Hello, and welcome to yet another episode of the WA Lecture Series. So I did, uh, I don't know if I promised, but I have said I would really like to do more lectures before the year is out. Finally, we have delivered. There are some more lectures coming, at least one more now today with this one. So um, I just kind of randomly had the idea for this, but I think it's kind of a useful one. Um, so the subject here is the Fourth Fleet System of the Warriors of Ice here. So um, the idea here will be to go over a little bit of the history um, as far as this system itself. So not necessarily the history of WA, but um, how the ideas and the, the fundamental concepts and the organization of the Fourth Fleet System for WA came about and um, how they've kind of changed over time. And also, I'm going to kind of start with that and then segue into an overview of how the fourth fleet system actually works as well. So hopefully, especially that second part will be useful to newer members or even recruiters who want to uh, maybe explain this system to uh, new members effectively. Um, hopefully, it'll be useful in those cases. So um, yeah, in that case, let's get started. So I've got my little uh, document here, so I can kind of um, get some notes here. So um, previously, let's start with where we came from. So originally, before we had what we call the first Viking era, sometimes it's called the first Viking age, but um, that sounds a little bit too close to the actual historical Viking age. Usually, we use the term era for WA, eras, or, uh, or epoch. So, um, Basically, those are the two um, two terms that are used. But the first Viking era was March. So that started here in... March of 2018, and that ran until September of 2020. So um, I guess I kind of said we wouldn't get into the history of WA here, but I think there's some... Uh, relevant stuff, so we'll go, so we had our big rebellion in October, November of 2019, everything came to a head, so, um, there's currently a saga in the works, um, we're about four chapters in on that, describing that, but, um, essentially can say as far as the fallout here is we had a uh, loss of several key um, officers Let's see if we can zoom out a bit here so with the loss of several key officers um, that would be the main thing. So um, with the with the Viking system, basically, um, how we were organized was uh, with great companies. Um, and then the number varied, but most for most of this time period, WA was organized into two great companies, each of which would have um, three war bands. That's actually how things started off. In March of 2018 when we first started this and this system came about um, based on uh, in the previous system um, at the end there in in late 2017 and early 2018 basically the the all thing and the gathering of officers was were called the Knights of the Imperium not to be confused with other Knight orders that exist and did exist previously but basically the term knight just meant you were a leader. You were a leadership figure in WA. And you could train to become a knight and then join the all thing that way. And basically, this whole, the system, um, the first Viking system was put together um, by the assembled uh, knights in the all thing. Um, it was also put together um, somewhat publicly uh, through, um, so originally fireside chat and office hours were combined into one. So basically I do my announcements and then have office hours and that would actually be streamed as well. And then basically anybody could just uh, show up and talk same way we still do it of course, but the difference being they were just combined into one event. So a lot of discussions took place during those firesides 
um, as far as putting together this Viking system. But basically, we had two great companies and three war bands. And for most of this, so it started off with that they were just kind of arbitrary. But for most of um, each war band had its own uh, uh, focus. So basically, uh, you might have one that focused primarily on League of Legends. Um, and you might have multiple that focused on League of Legends, for example. You might have one that we had one that focused on uh, on uh, war gaming that we have today. So uh, you know, World of Warships, uh, World of Tanks, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the system that we had. Um, might be sounding familiar to some of you already, but um, hence why I kind of wanted to go over this because this kind of shows where we where we came from just before. Um, so basically we had this now uh, towards the end there, we did have some changes. We had a third great company briefly. Um, we had additional war bands, um, be created and some war bands be disbanded or moved around and such. But the gist of it was that you had a great company and each great company was led by a Jarl. And then each great company basically oversaw several war bands. Um, and ranks in this system were all Viking uh, style ranks. So, um, let's see if I can remember them all here. I'll list them. So basically, and I'll put guest in there too. So this is a system we had before. And now all these top ranks, these are officer ranks. Actually, let's do this. Let's have this be here. And then, yeah. So, uh, so I served as High King previously, Emperor in the previous era. We went to... Um, this Viking-inspired system with the ranks, High King, Jarl, Hesurthi, and Huskarl. These are all the officer ranks. These are all kind of leadership type of ranks, all ranks that were in the all thing. And then these were the lower ranks. So a lot of this is not terribly dissimilar to what we have um, right now, as far as you'll see the, the structure in terms of there being a number of officer ranks, a number of non-officer lower ranks um, is kind of similar. So you can kind of see how this would work. Um, and basically, WA is organized entirely um, kind of by game or games, like games of a similar genre, um, is how the clan was put together. Um, so I don't want to go into too much uh, heavy detail on the Viking era, but I think it's, it's an important thing to touch on. We might have a lecture where we really go all over um, every little detail of the, of the Viking era, but um, not going to be this one. So... Um, one thing I want to talk about is, um, because it's something that persisted, is the um, houses. So, um, this is exactly the, it's, it's the same now. It was the same in the Viking era. It was the same before that. Um, basically this is something that's been around a long time in WA, a very long time. It's an important tradition for a lot of people. Um, it's as plain and simple as just your co the color of your name on Discord, and yet it's also so much more complicated than that because it's about tracing your ancestry and your lineage all the way back to the founders of the clan, back up through the founder of your house, the founder of your family, um, and from you down through all of your own recruits as well, and potentially you can even make your own family, make your own house. So... Um, it's a really important part of WA and a really huge tradition. Um, and so obviously it's something that's very important. It's something that existed in the Viking era. Um, I think some people have talked about, and it may even be evident to some of you um, watching, that um, there is kind of a sort of conflict here, if only because we've got a clan here, which is unlike basically any other clan out there, but certainly... Something unusual we have is having both the house and family. Uh, some call this the cultural side of organization. And we also have a second system of organization, which is usually called the chain of command um, or the regular, you know, enlisted members, the regular, the ranks, um, whatever we want to call it. 
So you basically have these two sides, and yeah, okay, you can say, well, this is by game and this is by lineage and recruitment, but you're still going to wind up with a situation where you have a lord who is in charge of a house, which could have many families within it. You could have a lord in charge of 25, 50, 100 even people potentially in that house, expanding further if you include everyone who's ever been in it or people that are lurking around as guests on the server and such. So... You can see how this could be a position that is going to naturally seem to have some level of power. And that's something that's always been an issue without, um, throughout WA history, excuse me, um, as far as uh, the balance of power between the house side and the, the chain of command side. Um, and it's probably always going to be kind of a small issue, but generally, um, as long as I've been leading, we try to err on the side of... The chain of command is where the actual power lies. Being an officer, that's position of power. Being a lord or an earl is more position of um, maybe prestige. They're titles, essentially. It doesn't mean they're worthless, but you shouldn't necessarily have a huge amount of power. You know, uh, More so, these are titles that come with responsibilities. It's your job to maintain your house and maintain your family. That's your responsibility. Um, it's not necessarily that you can take your lord title and start, you know, throwing it around and trying to um, uh, make people do what you tell them. That's that's what the chain of command is about, is orders and doing your job. Houses and families are more, I, I mean, you have a job to do, but um, there isn't really that chain of command system, generally speaking. Some exceptions, for example, the knight orders, generally the lord or somebody else, like a knight commander, would be in charge of the house's knights, and then they sort of would issue orders to those knights. But um, again, something like that is how this conflict tends to arise, as far as, well, you've got a lord uh, quarreling with a jarl, for example, how does that turn out? Uh, generally, somebody has to mediate that, because as much as the chain of command could, uh, should take precedence, uh, those conflicts are just going to arise. Something happens, but... All right. Uh, digressing pretty heavily here, so let's try to get to the real meat of the which is the fourth fleet system. So... We go to the fourth fleet system here. Where did this all begin? Well, it began, again... Began in, in, in 2020, but uh, really the story goes back a bit before September 2020. Um, it goes something that was in the, I believe, the summer. Let me find out real quick, because I bet I can find it. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. In fact, yeah, so... Basically, you go back to the months before um, September of 2020, and um, what I was doing was putting together this system, both in the all thing, uh, talking with our officers that were assembled there from the um, in still in the Viking era, and also publicly on Twitch by streaming it. So basically, the entire Fourth Fleet system was put together publicly um, in Twitch uh, or on on Twitch um, with a lot of ideas drawn from random people, but also from the all thing from people that came just to talk with me. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a unique way of putting it together. Um, again, like I said, the Viking system was kind of put together publicly, but um, I wouldn't put it in the same boat because it was more like when this was put together, anybody could show up and give ideas, but it wasn't necessarily the whole thing was out in the open the whole time while we were putting it together. It was primarily taking place in the all thing with all of us having input on that. Um, so the fourth fleet, the difference really being that everything out in the open, yes, there's discussions in the all thing, but the system and, and, you know, the progress as it was being created, all the drafts of the rules and everything was all out there. In fact, you could probably find a lot of it if you go back through old fireside chat mods and such like that. Um, but um, something I want to touch on, which is what I was just looking up, is in August of 2020, So in August of 2020, um, I held what I call the first Aesir Summit. Um, and to my knowledge, it's basically the first time something like this has ever uh, officially happened in WA history. There's been some instances before, um, but basically what this was, was I opened up a channel. Everyone in WA could talk and just 
throw out any ideas or suggestions they had on how should the clan run? How should we be organized? What should our rules be? Everything. So everyone, anyone could just throw stuff out there in a text chat. Because um, it can be a bit easier than showing up in voice, you know, attending the, 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 my office hours and such. Um, you know, working around time zones and things like that. Um, this was probably something that was suggested to me uh, for that very reason. Uh, I don't recall who or why, but we wound up um, doing this ISO Summit, um, and it was pretty useful. Basically, we put together a bunch of stuff. Um, of course, I've always had the Google Form suggestion box, basically, and um, my office hour is always open. Of course, people can always just DM me, too. Um, but this was an official venue for providing your ideas. So that was the idea with the first ISO Summit is just everyone throwing out their ideas for a new system. So we had people arguing and disagreeing about different stuff. You know, it wasn't like we just had a system of, you know, materialize out of this. But there is a lot of great ideas that came out of it. And a lot of the stuff we are doing came out of, I mean, certainly a lot from the all thing, of course, having so many experienced officers throwing stuff out there is always going to be huge. But the Icer Summit, too, was super useful because there are, you know, older members or just people that just have good ideas lurking around that might not be in the owl thing, that might not show up to office hours, that got to throw, throw ideas out there and discuss them with me and the officers in the Icer Summit. Back to what I was saying before as far as was this the first time this was ever done. Like I said, kind of, but there, I mean, we used to do things uh, via the forums. So if you had an account in the forums, sometimes there would be public threads, like most famously debating on if WA should be an empire or a fleet. Um, that was a huge debate in, in 2008 and also in 2010, um, that being just prior to and just after the third fleet era. So we had the first empire era, then empire or fleet, big thread. We wind up being the third fleet. Third fleet ends, another big thread, empire or fleet. Everyone throw out your ideas, your votes. And um, we wound up being an empire again. Second empire era rolled around with that. Um, I'm not going to throw that on here because it's, it's kind of extra information, but just some examples of other times we've had sort of big summits. Um, we've obviously never been a democracy or anything like that, but there's been other instances where the public's ideas uh, have been kind of given a big venue just for everyone to throw everything out there and um, to get suggestions that way. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but since I've been leader, we have had way more venues for people to give their suggestions. That's just uh, the truth. Uh, they're still there, and they have been there for many years. Um, so September 2020 is when the Fourth Fleet system rolled out officially. So uh, what were the what were the ideas? Let's put. Fourth Fleet era begins. 2020. So, what exactly were the problems we were trying to solve? So, there's kind of a few. We'll see if I think of any <laughs> along the way, but I'll start with these couple. Okay. So, one big issue we had, and this actually wouldn't be remedied till a little bit later, till about December of 2020. So, a big issue we had is a large number of guests on the server, because during the Viking era, what we would do is require people to post in roll call, to be active, etc. Familiar to a lot of you, right? But if you, if you uh, didn't do that, you would just be made a guest on the server. So... Um, frankly, looking back, I think it was uh, not a good policy. Um, I think there's some benefits. What we wanted to do was we wanted to be pretty um, hardcore, or elitist, I guess you could call it. But we wanted to make it so if you wanted to be a member of WA, if you wanted to have the privileges of being a member, you had to walk the walk. You had to actually do your job. You had to post a roll call. You had to show up, etc. So if you disappeared or something like that, I mean, you could go on a leave of absence, but, um, frankly, a lot of people just wouldn't bother. They would just disappear, and then they'd show up six months later and say, why am I a guest, and then throw a, a big tantrum about it. Um, it's kind of unreasonable, but at the same time, I think looking back, um, it is unfortunate that we would have these people who were maybe longtime WA members, and then they'd disappear for a while or be inactive and not meet the requirements, and then they'd get moved to guests, so they'd lose all, lose all their roles. 
I believe it was December 2020 that was implemented. So, so this is probably, I mean, this might be one of the biggest changes in WA history. I would say probably the biggest, one of the biggest changes, maybe the biggest in the fourth fleet era, potentially, as long as I've been leading WA. So what we did um, is, okay, we're going to have active duty members and uh, reserve members, reservists. So basically, we started with, if you've ever been a member in WA, you're at least a reservist. If you want to make, if you want to be active duty and get some extra perks like participating in house wars or your things, you might know them. Um, participating in different festivals, earning marks, having a profile, um, participating in game giveaways is something we've started more recently. All this stuff, you have to be an active duty member. So you have to do the bare minimum, which is really not that much, but post and roll call, be active in game and on the server. Um, that's the requirement, basically. Um, so if you do all that stuff, then you're active duty. If you don't, but you have been recruited before, then you get to be a reservist. So you keep your house role, you keep access to like 95% of the server. You're just not eligible for some of those extra perks and stuff like that. So what this did is um, it kind of allowed for people that are not super active, but it wouldn't really make sense for them to take an LOA because they're just never going to come back to full activity or they probably won't. Um, it kind of let them hang around. It kind of let us stay connected to a lot of older members who can just kind of lurk and still have access to the whole server and not feel like they're ostracized because they're a guest with a gray name. They're like a weirdo outcast. Um, so I think this, looking back, um, this was a really awesome idea. Um, there are some downsides. I think one big downside is that there's not, a, I mean, we try to have perks for active duty members, but a lot of people are just going to say, I'd rather be a reservist. So there's always going to be a large number of people that are just kind of wanting to move to reservist or wanting to stay at reservist as opposed to what we're trying to do before was really try to push everyone to be a member in WA um, to do their job and to respond to roll call and stay active and stuff so that they would have access to the server still and still have their house role and everything. We wanted to incentivize that. So there was a reason for that before, um, and now we do have the issue of having... A lot of reservists, but um, it's just kind of the pros and cons of each one. So really, really big development there. Um, it's been part of the fourth fleet system and not really something that we had previously in WA history, but it's kind of hard to compare currently to pre-Discord because Discord works quite a bit differently from how our forums worked. Yeah, we still have our forums, and yeah, Discord has now added threads and forum channels, but it's still pretty different platform. So another issue we had that we were trying to fix with the fourth fleet system is um, the game focuses. So remember how we had the war bands, right? Each one with a focus on certain games. Problem is we have a lot of people that play a lot of different games or people that just keep switching which game they're playing. They play one game for a week and then they play something else. So it used to be what you would do is, okay, I, I'm done playing League. I'm switching to World Tanks. I have to apply for a transfer. It has to be approved by the Jarls of both great companies and the Huskarls of both war bands. So as all this paperwork and red tape just so I can switch warbands and then I, I, I join join a new warband, play World of Tanks for a couple days, get tired of it, I want to go back. Now we're going to do the whole transfer thing again. You transfer a bunch of times and your officers start thinking you're crazy and they, they're tired of doing it. So you're kind of seeing the issues there. So what is the solution here? So the idea that we had here was, okay, what if we have our platoons... And instead of having everyone, so in this system, everyone was in a warband outside of uh, me as High King. I was not in a warband. Uh, until later, I actually made my own warband. But um, generally speaking, High King was outside a warband. And these ranks were administrative ranks leading great companies. So technically, they weren't in warbands either. But basically, everyone had a post. So you were involved, you were kind of set where you were. Um, and later we would kind of have, let people do like, m have multiple hats the way we do now. But for the most part, everyone was in a war band. So basically you were trying to be put in a war band based on what games you play, but maybe you don't play any of the games in any of the war bands. And it's kind of awkward. Like, where do you go? Uh, again, I gave the previous examples. What if you keep switching games? I mean, what if you play a bunch of games? It's tough. So the solution we came up with is, okay, platoons. Now, we had platoons before. You go way back to the Second Empire era, the Third Fleet era. We're talking pre-2016. 2016 going back all the way back to 2008. Going back even earlier, we had um, basically 
Instead of great companies and war bands, you had divisions and platoons. But they focused basically the same way, except the division usually was just one game. So we might ha we had a StarCraft division called the Eye of Odin, and it had multiple of different platoons in it that each focused on different types of StarCraft maps that you could play, different game modes, basically. So on the surface, you'd think, okay, platoons, this is just the same thing as Great Companies and Warbands, essentially. But what we did is platoons, I don't know, you could call platoons version two. So what did that mean? Well, it meant that uh, no one is a member. I'll just talk about it. Uh, no one is a member of a certain platoon. So uh, what platoons are, are essentially, you might call it a building or an outpost on a game. So a platoon is not a set group of members or an entity that contains a bunch of members that your member has to be a part of. Instead, it's basically just a leadership structure on a given game. So, you know, for example, on, uh, on, on EVE Online, for example, um, you know, we have our in-game EVE corporation and organization, and it's led by somebody, and they have that whole leadership structure. So this is just basically saying, um, okay, we have some people whose job it is to run WA's efforts on EVE Online. These people are in charge of EVE Online for WA. So that's what the platoon is. That doesn't mean that they're not allowed to run multiple platoons. You can run multiple platoons. Uh, you can play other games, etc. So what's the job to do as the leader of the platoon? Well, uh, primarily just to keep track of who's playing their game. So it's they write, the platoon leadership writes a situation report every month where they say everyone they saw playing the game that month. Um, so that way, rather than people being a member of a platoon, the idea is if they play a game with somebody in that platoon, with anybody in that platoon, then they're going to be by leadership and they're going to go on the report that month as saying, hey, this guy was playing the game, and then we know. So it's a good way of keeping track of who's active and who's playing what games. I mean, some, some people show up on like five different situation reports every month because they play a ton of games, and that's totally fine. So what the system does, it just lets everyone play whatever they want, and you don't have to worry about, oh, I get demoted in my platoon because I don't play PlayStation anymore. I'm in the PlayStation platoon. I have to transfer it. No, it doesn't matter at all. You, you, if you don't want to play PlayStation anymore, you just stop playing and you go you go play something else. You're going to show up on the other situation report for the new game you're playing. So it lets everyone play as many games or as few games as they want. Um, I do realize I misspoke earlier. I think I said the base requirement for active duty was in-game activity and server activity. That's actually only for gunner and higher. So to be a regular active duty member at the rank of Marine, you only need to be active on the server and posted roll call. So if you only play games that nobody else plays, you can still be active duty at Marine. It's just a question of um, having the in-game activity uh, being there. So if you don't play any games that anyone in WA plays and you're not interested in making a platoon or doing anything like that, um, and just you're just active on the server, then you're probably going to stay at Marine, but you can still be active duty. So that's basically kind of the compromise because we have had that situation before where it's like, well, this guy's really active and he's a great member, but he doesn't play anything that anybody plays. He's just kind of sitting, hanging around, or he's on a weird time zone. He doesn't play with anybody. Well, it's kind of hard to promote somebody like that to an officer position because, I mean, they're not really doing anything with WA outside of just chatting on the server. Um, but... Um, they should still be able to be active duty, at least, and have all the perks there. Um, so yeah, hopefully that explains some of that. Um, so that's the idea with platoons, basically, is that these are essentially just the leadership structure WA has on all of its games. So um, what did we do? Well, we started with... Let me bring it up here. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to be in the About WA channel. Um, especially the clan ranks and duties uh, thread and the organization. I think it's called organization, right? Let me find it. Oh, divisions and platoons um, as well. List a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about. So let's just copy what we have right now. Hopefully I, said, I might have to zoom out a little more. Hmm. Yeah, we're still cut off just a little bit.
That's okay. Well, let's... there we go. Okay. So, what did we do? Um, now the one new platoon we have here, actually we have a couple. Um, so we have EVE Online, newer platoon, and Command and Conquer, newer platoon that was formed after the Fourth Fleet era began. But uh, the, the same principles are basically there. With the idea being that, so divisions essentially function a lot like great companies in that they, they are basically just vehicles for platoons. Um, it's not like all the platoons in a division have to be of the same game or a similar game or anything like that, which is how divisions worked way back in the Third Fleet era and Second Empire eras. But currently with the Fourth Fleet, fourth fleet system, these are really just vessels for leadership and for managing the platoons in their care. Um, now, the one confusing thing here you'll see is that we have a lot of Admiralty running divisions as opposed to... Um, well, I better go over the ranks for the fourth leader point. That's probably be helpful for everybody, huh? So let's let's list the. Okay, so these ranks here, these are called the Admiralty. These ranks here, these are commissioned officers or CO ranks. These ranks here, non-commissioned officer ranks. These ranks here, enlisted ranks. And then we have reservist and guest. So the idea here is that captains and commanders are generally going to be the leaders of divisions, but currently we have some higher ranked members running divisions, which again is totally fine because divisions and platoons do not require you to be like have only one job or to be part of that division or platoon. It's more just somebody has to run it. It's a job that needs to get done, not a, a permanent post that you have to hold with no other uh, jobs. So um, it's really a, a duty is kind of the way to put it. You know, you can have multiple duties. A lot of people might have the uh, duty of running a certain event or running multiple events every week or uh, doing, uh, running the situation report for a platoon or, or helping with multiple platoons. You know, you can do any of that. So there's a lot of flexibility with the Fourth Fleet. That's one of the main advantages um, that we do have. So you can see here that each of these is pretty much devoted to a specific game um, or games. Here we have StarCraft uh, 1, or Brood War, and StarCraft 2 in the same platoon. But generally speaking, these are limited to one game or to similar games. So Wargaming, meaning uh, World of Warships, World of Tanks, those are all grouped up together um, as kind of very similar kind of games. But for example, we probably, we almost certainly would not make a platoon that was like World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft and Guild Wars 2, like an MMO platoon. We probably wouldn't want to do that because we want to make sure that like the platoon is like specific enough that, um, you know, you can have one person in charge. Like one person could be playing all of the games uh, very easily and that all the people can also play with one another very easily and will play with one another. That's kind of the general idea with the platoons, is that these have specific game focuses, and the divisions are just kind of vessels for um, managing those platoons. Okay. So that's kind of how platoons work, right? Is, uh, or our platoons version 2, you might call them. I mean, on the one hand, you could say, okay, we should have used a different term because these work differently from the old platoons, but... I mean, we wanted to use the, the fleet system again just with some, I would say, relatively minor modifications. I mean, this is kind of significant, but um, I think at the end of the day, it's it's not a big deal. And, um, 
especially at this point, now that we've been running for about two years with this system, I think pretty much everyone just knows what a platoon is, they associate it with this, they know how it works, etc. So it's weird when you compare it to the rest of WA history, but I think when you look at some of the issues I talked about that we had and some of the solutions we wanted, um, it works pretty well. Okay, and a, a final smaller issue um, that we had is a lack of administration rank. So if we go back with the first Viking system, Hi King, I'm going to do an everything. And then what do the Jarls do? Well, the Jarls, they're in charge of those great companies. Now, yeah, they're in the all thing. Yeah, they can help do stuff, but there's sort of a jump here. In fact, some of the issues we had with <laughs> Sundering is basically this. How big is this gap between High King and Jarl? Is it non-existent? Is it huge? Is it medium? <laughs> so without going into further details, um, that is kind of a question. Is administration ranks? Is the Jarl an administration rank? Um, so the question would be, okay, is captain an administration rank? And the answer is, uh, no, not really. I mean, if you're a captain in the all thing, you're going to, you know, people are going to listen to you. But um, the idea here is that we can get a lot more work done if more of the administrative duties were split up between other people. And it also gives the opportunity for people who are just at these kind of high level leadership positions to move into administrative roles. There's that little bit more room for upward mobility, if you will. So essentially the Admiral is the second in command of the clan and the Admiral is probably the most, um, well, the rest of the Admiralty aren't going to like me saying this, but I would say the Admiral is technically the most important of the Admiralty roles because the Admiral oversees all of this, the entire chain of command. All these divisions are underneath the Admiral. So you've got all the platoons within each of their divisions and the division leaders report to the Admiral. Of course, you'll notice our <laughs> Admiral uh, is also running a division too, but, but um, you get the idea. So the Admiral is not only second in command of the clan in general, but also is specifically in charge of that whole chain of command. So ultimately, uh, things like making new divisions, changing divisions, making new platoons, moving platoons around, changing them, promoting and demoting uh, people, leadership of each platoon, health of each platoon and division, leadership of each division, all that stuff is going to go all the way back up to the top to the Admiral. Now, it's not to say I'm going to have nothing to do with it, but all that stuff is in the Admiral's purview. How about the Vice Admiral? Well, the Vice Admiral is in charge of the house and family cultural system. So um, it tends to be something that is not as, uh, not as big of a role because... Um, as I kind of said earlier, the idea is that the chain of command here is where all the power lies in the house and family thing. It's the cultural side. It's the tradition. It's important, but it isn't necessarily um, like you have to be promoting and demoting people for houses and families. I mean, to a degree, you know, you got to try to make sure that we have active lords and active earls and that they're doing their, uh, you know, maintaining their houses and families. But uh, again, you get you can kind of see the difference. Um, and then the Rear Admiral. So the Rear Admiral is in charge of everyone's jobs and duties. So making sure that the roster review duty, which is where each house's members are kind of reviewed. Um, we have somebody who double checks. Did they all post a roll call? Did they, were they all active on Discord? Were they active in game? Um, how do we know if they're active in game? Well, you check the situation reports that each platoon put out to say if they were playing that game that month. And then the Commodore is basically in charge of recruitment and recruit retention and helping new members find their way around the server. So, um, you know, you can say Rear Admiral and Commodore are kind of, you know, have specific jobs, whereas Admiral and Vice Admiral are more overseers, kind of at the top of their respective pyramids in that way. So that's how the Admiral ranks work. How about the rest of them? Very straightforward, the rest of them. So these are all commissioned officer ranks here, which means they get access to the all thing. They are moderators. They are leadership figures in the clan. Um, and they're required to have at least one duty, whether that be running a platoon, running an event. Um, it can be anything, but they have to have a duty and they have to keep completing it. So to be a CO, you have to be active and responsible um, at a bare minimum. So the general idea is that captains and commanders will run divisions, lieutenants and ensigns will run platoons, warrant officers will sort of serve as assistants to the leadership of platoons, um, as will MCPO and CPOs generally. Um, but they are also sort of training to move up into these leadership roles. 
an enlisted members, well, they kind of just do whatever they want. But essentially, Marine being your standard member, Gunner being kind of a more active and committed member who's kind of showcased, hey, I'm sticking around. I'm not just going to instantly disappear after hitting Marine because going from recruit to Marine is pretty easy. You join, you fill out your super, super simple quiz, which is just your roll call, basically. And then pretty quickly, you're a Marine. Okay, so how do you, how do you make Gunner? Well, you got to be active in game. You actually have to be kind of a part of WA and show that you're kind of sticking around for the time being. Master Gunner, those are kind of the best of the regular members. They seem to be in it for the long haul. They can follow the rules very effectively. Um, they're just very, very solid, high-quality members. And then the idea is, once you're Master Gunner, um, or rather, once you're CPO, um, that's when, okay, now you're access to the command center, which is sort of the, the mini all thing, or maybe the major all thing, the lower all thing, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of where all questions and organization of the clan is conducted is in the command center. Yes, the all thing is used, but that's kind of a higher level leadership one. So it's, it's often more times used for like kind of sensitive topics in the all thing, whereas command center is like, okay, I got... You want to report something like an incident, maybe, or you want to say, oh, you know, I need help with this. I need somebody to, to do this job. You know, somebody needs to do this. This guy wants to get promoted. This guy should get pro promoted. You know, I'm, this guy's going on LOA. I'm going on LOA. All that organizational stuff, that's going to go in command center. Access to it comes with promotion from master gunner to chief petty officer. Once you're a chief petty officer, I mean, yeah, you could just sit there, but that's when now you might begin officer training. You can begin officer training earlier. But this is the normal point because you need to um, pass the first stage of officer training to reach Master Chief Petty Officer. Um, and there are there's officer training all the way up through Lieutenant. So there's multiple certifications. There's one for MCPO, one for Warrant Officer, one for Ensign, and one for Lieutenant. Once you've completed all those, you're eligible for promotion to any rank, basically. But... Um, to reach Ensign, you have to get the certification for MCPO, Warrant Officer, and Ensign. To reach Lieutenant, you have to get all those and the Lieutenant certification, and so on. So we basically broke up early on officer training. It was just like you had to complete it to go from MCPO to Warrant Officer, but it kind of stunk because we wanted it to be significant. So it's kind of a major deal to do officer training. It was a lot of work just to move up this one rank. A bit strange. So I think um, it's, it's, it's good that we made that change now that it's broken up into these different segments to reach each uh, level. Yep, so enlisted ranks there, and I already talked about reservists, right? That's people who have joined WA at any point, and then uh, they maintain access to the server and such, but just they don't have all of the little perks, um, like taking part in house wars, getting uh, marks, uh, awards, titles, all that kind of stuff. Yes, that's the people that are on our server that haven't joined, that uh, haven't been recruited. They have access to um, one significant thing, a change that we made, is that all the game channels are open to everyone. So guests have access to our Mead Hall channel. Used to be we had a special Bifrost channel, which was a welcome channel, which is all guests could see. Now guests are in Mead Hall. They can talk there. They can see all of that. Guests can also, of course, join just about all of our voice channels at the top. And they get access to all the game channels. So if people just want to hang out and play games, they can certainly stay at guests. And certainly do that. A lot of the server is still hidden, but not entirely. You know, everything that they need, the core components for hanging out and gaming are there. So yeah, that's kind of how all the, uh, the ranks work. Um, I think I talked about, let's see if I kind of missed anything here. Yeah. So, oh, one thing to go over is originally when this was first established, the Fourth Fleet, yeah, we had all these ranks and such, but we actually didn't have divisions in platoons. So we added these ranks, and by the way, these are almost all the same as the original fleet ranks. I'll go over that next, actually, um, in a little bit. But we had these ranks. We didn't have divisions of platoons. Everyone was just part of one of the clan. So that was a change because in the previous system, each great company and each warband would have their own roll call. So you had to post in your respective roll call. Now, it was nice because it was easy to manage for whoever's running the warband. They just have to look at the roll call for their own warband. But 
problem is we wind up with a billion different channels. Like each warband has to have like five channels. I mean, it, it was kind of a mess as far as organization. Um, and you might have people that have to post in like multiple different roll calls. Um, well, we didn't have that. But we had more band roll calls, and we shifted to great company roll calls. But it's still, it's just a lot to to keep track of, and organizationally, it's a little bit of of a mess. Um, so having the one clan wide roll call is really easy for the people that have to post in the roll call. The downside is it's harder for the administration, but it's pretty simple. The people that do the roster review, um, especially most people now have done it a lot. They know how to do it. It's pretty simple. Basically, they just go through and they look up on Discord. Um, you know, they can just scroll through the roll call channel or they can search for messages from a certain member in the roll call channel and find the last time they posted in a roll call. So Discord makes that fairly easy to do. So um, we had that clan-wide roll call starting in September of 2020, but no divisions in Platoon. So nobody was a member of any division in Platoon. Same way it is now, but we didn't implement that uh, Platoon's version 2 thing I talked about earlier. That was December of 2020 that we both implemented reservists and platoons. I believe that's correct. Um, to be honest, that could be slightly off, but, but I believe that's the correct timeline. Um, so that's when we implemented the platoons with the idea being, you know, um, we, need, we need to give these ranks uh, a purpose and a structure um, because uh, for those first couple months, it was kind of like, well, these ranks are fun to move up, but what is the purpose of each one? There's still an element of that, like what's the difference between captain and commander? Basically, just captain is a more respected and established and experienced and reliable commander. Same thing with lieutenant versus ensign, etc. So um, there's still kind of that element of mostly this is just a progression in terms of reliability and such. But now these ranks are kind of tied to specific stuff. Now, you, you could be a high-ranking member and not running a division or platoon. There's other opportunities. Basically, like I said, the only requirement is if you're a CO, if you're a warrant officer or higher, you just have to have a job. So you could just be running events. You could just be doing paperwork, you know, roster review, helping with maintaining the server and the forums, documentation, all that kind of stuff. And you can get promoted that way too. These ranks don't have a requirement that you have to be running a division or a platoon, but that's kind of the default use for them. Like I said, captain and commander running a division, lieutenant ensign running platoon, etc. So we rolled out the platoons December 2020 to kind of add more structured purpose to these ranks and also to make sure that our individual efforts on a game could be coordinated. So, you know, if somebody has a question about something on Warframe, they know who to go to. They go to Six Kogi because he's in charge of that stuff. So it's clear who's running the show on that given game in each of these. So again, I think a positive change, I would say. So December 2020, I would say, is kind of when... I don't want to say the system rolled out in full, but these were significant changes. Um, and we've kind of really been rolling with that ever since. I mean, we have not really had any changes in the past two years um, that are really significant. Um, just maybe very small things like changing the wording in a rule. Um, officer training, for example, that was a change. Like I said, originally it was just jump from MCPO to warrant officer. Um, sometime later, it was changed to have be broken down into those individual segments and certifications for each of these four ranks. So smaller changes like that, but we've pretty much been rolling with that, the fourth fleet system um, ever since. Okay, go over is uh, differences between these and the old ranks. So let's, what were the old ranks in the third fleet era and early second empire era? I will post. Took me a second to make sure I'm remembering all these correctly. Okay. Oh, you're right, Lieutenant Commander. Thank you. Yet another rank. Even more. Um, so people that say we have too many pointless ranks, well, it's a tradition. We've had them for a while. Um, so 
Uh, as you can see, uh, not terribly different, but some key changes. So the top, basically the same, but the uh, these Admiral T ranks did not have the same jobs at all. In fact, these were basically a council for the Fleet Admiral. That's basically how they functioned. Um, you also would have... Um, so there's kind of some variance, too, um, between Third Fleet Era and Second Empire and such. Like, eventually we had individual fleets that were led by admirals as well. Um, which is something we don't have now. Now we just have the Admiral overseeing everything. Um, but but the rank names were the same, basically, and they were all at the top there of the administration. There were some additional ones. like We had, like, uh, Warden, I think, who were sort of... We sort of had a judicial branch of the clan um, who were in charge of, uh, like, if an exiled member wanted to come back or somebody had a grievance, a major grievance with somebody in the day, they might bring it up in the judicial review, and the judicial branch of the clan would sort of make a ruling on that. And they were supposed to be, like, all-powerful. I mean, like, the Fleet Admiral could not overrule the ruling of the judicial branch. So, quite interesting. Um, so, had com had Captain and Commander and Lieutenant Commander were division leadership structure. Again, these were the old-style divisions in Platoon, so if they actually had members, like, everyone had to be in a Platoon. But, um, yeah. Basically, division leadership structure, and then lieutenant and lieutenant junior grade were the leaders of platoons. Ensign and warrant officer were sort of helped the leadership of the platoon. Sometimes they had to run the platoon if these guys were missing in action. And it's sort of the same for MCPO, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, and Master Chief Petty Officer, as far as sort of assisting with running the show in the platoon. The rest of these were essentially just ranks that you could move up in, so we had crewmen, Third class petty officer, second class petty officer, first class petty officer, chief petty officer. Basically just moving on up if you were active and show that you cared. That's basically what they were for. Cadet was if you were actually punished. This is like timeout, basically. Uh, <laughs> you're grounded. That's being a cadet. Or if you were like somebody that was banned, that was like tentatively let back in. You know, this is like uh, being on parole. Uh, you got to keep up your good behavior. Yeah, so originally this was called uh, Seaman. And it was changed, perhaps you can guess why, to Crewman after a while. Um, but uh, so some of the changes here, so Gunner and Master Gunner are actual naval ranks in, in different navies around the world. So basically I kind of combined some different stuff. I, didn't, I got rid of MCPON because it's like, it's so close to MCPO, I thought it might be confusing. Lieutenant Commander as well, I thought not necessarily important to have. Same thing with Lieutenant Junior, just dropping some of these intermediate ranks that, that uh, do not have much purpose. Um, and then these, I thought, uh, rather confusing, because that worked before was these were the non-commissioned officer ranks, right? Um... But if you're a non, if you're not a non-commissioned officer, you're not any kind of, of officer here. Why is the rank first class petty officer? Now, somebody in the navy could explain perfectly why that is, but I'm just saying for the average person joining the clan is going to say, "So I'm an officer. I'm a third class petty officer. I'm an officer, right?" No, you're not. So I thought it would be confusing. So this way, it's very clear. What does the word officer be? Um, it means that you're a chief petty officer or higher. So once you have the word officer in your rank, that means you're an officer. And whereas before, we would use the term officer for all these ranks. Now, officers are split up into non-commissioned officers and commissioned officers. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, Kusig points out, Tight working relationship between lieutenant and lieutenant junior grade running a, uh, a platoon. Absolutely. Um, another thing that we had. Um, so these were changed to basically gunner and master gunner. Just simplified from three to two. Apprentice type system, Kusia calls it. Yeah, 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 absolutely, for sure. I mean, that's what a lot of these were, is basically if you were a warrant officer or even lower... You're kind of working your way up, and then as Lieutenant Junior, you're sort of being trained to be a leader. Lieutenant Commander is probably you moved up from Lieutenant, and now you're sort of an apprentice training to eventually lead a whole division 
as a captain. And the commander was sort of the, uh, as lieutenant junior to lieutenant, so is commander to captain, the second in command to the captain, generally speaking. Now, again, this changed a lot. We had a ton of ranking system changes in the Second Empire era because it lasted for six years. So <laughs> uh, there's a lot to sift through there that I'm not going to get into. But um, yeah, uh, change from crewman to uh, marine and recruit. So we actually added sort of a rank instead of cadet. We had recruit, which is just the rank. Anytime you join WA for the first time, you're at the rank of recruit. And pretty quickly, like I said, pretty easy. You move up to marine. But that's kind of the standard rank. That's the crewman rank. And then you move up through these, which now have become gunner and master gunner. And then the rest looks fairly similar with a couple of ranks dropped. So that's kind of the difference between the, you know, people say, oh, we are using the fleet system. Well, the fleet system hasn't been the same every time. The fourth fleet system is a bit different from the third fleet system and so on. But um, yeah, I think that goes over most of everything. One last thing. I'll talk about is rough platoons versus platoons. So a rough platoon is basically anybody can start one. Even if you're just a Marine, you can start a rough platoon. It's fine. So hence why we encourage, I mentioned one downside before being, well, if you're a Marine, but you're not playing any games anybody in WA plays, you're going to have a hard time ranking up because you're not going to be able to have any game activity because you've got nobody to play with. Um, well, you can just make your own rough platoon. And just start recruiting people and just playing with them. And then there you go. So that's kind of the route to the traditional route to rank up is going to be to either make a platoon or start helping out with a platoon. So a rough platoon is ranging from just random member just started some new game for us um, to platoons that are just uh, still small or, or kind of inactive or not having great success. Um, in order to reach platoon status, um, you have to have hit a certain rank in the clan, and you also have to um, make sure your platoon runs an event at least twice a month. So basically showcasing that there is some reliability um, and activity um, for, for the platoon. And that event has to be uh, attended by at least four people a couple of times. So basically showing that there are people playing your game, and you are at least a officer not just like a random Marine. Um, so there's some reliability that we're seeing there. And that's the difference between a rough platoon and a platoon. A platoon is just basically a, a more permanent uh, establishment for WA um, with more reliable leadership um, that's going to be more active and making sure they're running events and such. Platoon has to run an event uh, twice at least. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that gives everyone a good idea of how the fourth fleet system works. Um, again, you can always ask questions, whether it be comment on this, or you can uh, DM me or ask any commissioned officer, um, or just ping us, bring it up in Meat Hall, whatever. Um, we can for sure talk about it, and we're happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Um, you can also always read up in About WA. That channel, again, on Discord is super useful. Basically lists everything you could possibly want to know about how WA works right now. Talk to the Admiral for platoon ideas. Yes, yes, yes. Um, if you do want to start your own platoon, um, talking to the Admiral is uh, what you want to do, which is Kusi Egg. Um, as well, um, yeah, yeah. So like I said, Admiral is in charge of the whole COC. That includes making new platoons, brand new rough platoons. So that's how that would work, is you would talk to the Admiral if you want to start your own uh, platoon. Or rough platoon is probably how it would, it would start, um, generally speak. But okay, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. That is uh, the end of this lecture. Um, if you do have suggestions for further lecture topics that you'd like to see, or you want to host your own lecture, do let me know.